Aloha mai kako punaho ohana. My name is Linda Furuto and I'm here with Maui Taotaha representing class of 97 along with Nainoa Thompson, class of 72. Proud punaho alum. We want to let you know that near and far, we love you, we're thinking about you, and that we're carrying you in our hearts. Uh, this is the second time the three of us have voyaged together as we circumnavigate the globe. The first time was when we traveled from Hawaii to Tahiti this past May to July. And on this second voyage, well, in between, another crew took the canoes Hokulea and Hikianalia around the Society Islands and eventually to Pango Pango, which is where we jumped back on the Tuva'a. So far this trip, we have sailed from Pango Pango to Apia to Swains Island, and we are currently approximately 43.5 miles outside of Tutuila. We'll be rounding the corner into Pango Pango later today. One of the most beautiful messages that has been shared with us on both of these legs is that you know, when we eliminate borders, international, political, economic, social, we come to the realization, the reawakening, and the key message that we are one people, we are one nation, on one ocean, and one island earth, which is the mission of the worldwide voyage to Mala Mohonua. In each of the ports that we go to, the people have extended nothing but generosity and kindness and a tremendous outpouring of appreciation for what we're doing as well as inspiring us to be better people. When we were on Swain's Island, Alex Jennings and his family shared with us many of their traditions and their um, cultural heritages. For example, we had so much fun making um, baskets out of coconut palm fronds. Uh, we participated in traditional net fishing. We also uh, helped out a little bit in the kitchen and made kalo and ulu and helped the aunties with a uh, coconut crab. Oh, I still have the taste in my mouth. It's so oh no. We had the most amazing experiences with the people on Swain's Island. Uh, and many of the people from Swain's traced their ancestry back to Tokelau which is where we um, anticipated heading. Um, we prepared enough food and water and made va'a preparations to be able to go there. But um, unfortunately, we ran into some difficulty with um, the winds. They weren't um, in our favor. And um, it was the situation such that if we had possibly been able to make it up to Tokelau, it would have been extremely difficult making it back to Swain's Island and eventually to Pango Pango, which is where the next crew change will occur. And this reminded me of a story. Um, when Nainoa was much younger, he was sailing with his kumu, Papa Mao Piailug, and Nainoa was getting a little frustrated with the winds, and he was kind of a speaking to the winds and asking them to just to just change and as he was doing this Papa Mao um, said to Nainoa you know Nainoa the winds are your friends and the winds are what help us get safely to our destinations um, and there are lessons um, for both on the va'a as well as on land. You know, we can't change the winds per se, but we can change our sails and we can be um, flexible in whatever situations that may come our way in life. And to me, this is a way um, that we remember our ancestors who are always voyaging with us, always. So I look forward to connecting the ancient wisdom, modern connections to the past, the present, and the future. As I reflect on the past several months, I have a tremendous amount of appreciation for the people and the land and everyone who has made this voyage possible. I see images of coming into Papeete and being greeted by the French Polynesian president Gaston Floss and um, having dinner with the High Chief of Samoa, Tuya Tua, Tupua, Tamasese Efi, 
sailing with the United Nations Secretary General Ban Ki Moon, and talking story with the most beautiful children in in the ports that we land in. Um, one theme that ties all of these experiences together is, for me, is what do you do when you can't see the stars? Literally and figuratively, Nainoa said that one fifth of the time we cannot see the stars. So how do we navigate? As I think about that question, I hear the words of the High Chief of Samoa who told us to reach deep within, reach really, really deep within, find that place in your na'au, ask yourself, what values are you willing to sell for? What is important to you? What would you stand your ground for? And to me, this is a challenge that I would like to extend to you, Punaho Ohana. I would like to humbly ask you to go out into your communities, talk to your kupuna, talk to your kumu, talk to your parents, ask them what makes their community and your community so special and unique and what are some of the traditions and heritages that you can malama and that you can preserve for future generations and maui's challenge is to try to leave things better than how you found them this is the easiest way to explain the concept of malama honua because it could pertain to the community, um, your school, but also very personal relationships as well. We look forward to coming back home and joining you on Monday, October 20th at Kuai Helani for the Kuuhome. We hope by that time that you'll be able to take advantage of these challenges and we look forward to hearing your stories as well. Mahalo Nui Punahou School for adopting the worldwide voyage, for sitting with us in our hearts and our minds, and for being part of everything that we do. Mahalo Nui for signing the Promise to the Children, which says that we believe that the betterment of humanity is possible through education, from early childhood learning, through higher education, and we know Maui, Nainoa, and I know from personal experience that this is one of the greatest gifts that you, Punahou School, gave us. You now helped us navigate um, from the beginning. You're with us as we navigate the world. And mahalo again for helping to set an example of Mala Mohonua. Aloha.